Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be previewing the 2024 Stanley Cup matchup between the Vancouver Canucks and the Nashville Predators. To walk right in today, starting off with a little bit of the playoff history between these two teams. Starting off back in 2011, this was a round two match between these two teams, with Vancouver taking it in six games, eventually making their way to the Stanley Cup final to lose to the Boston Bruins. So for them, you know, this year hopefully we'll continue that trend, be it being able to play against the Bruins in the finals. Might be a little bit of an interesting rematch. Time will tell there as it brings us to this year. There's only been one time these two teams have played. So 2024 will be the second time. So see if there's a little bit more history written in this one. As well as the scores from this year's game starting off on October 24th. The Canucks did win 3-2 on October 31st was a 5-2 victory for the Canucks. And lastly, on December 19th was a 5-2 victory for the Canucks over the Predators. And this was another sort of these games obviously were in the past. So you know, in this, in this final decision coming up for the prediction, not too much of an impact there. Of course, there is a little bit that goes into it. You know, the, the, the Preds haven't beat the Canucks this year. So there is a little bit that goes into that. But at the end of the day, we'll, we'll let bygones be bygones, let the past be in the past, and just say for the, for, for the record of it that Vancouver has a slight edge going into the, to, to the players that are going to be shown here in a couple minutes. The thing now, look at the injuries. So for the Nashville Predators, no injuries to report, which is always a good thing heading into a playoffs. For the Vancouver Canucks, just one with Tucker Pullman. He hasn't played for the Canucks in, I don't think, a year and a half. So when we look at it, you know, not too much of a loss there. He hasn't played for the Canucks, so it's not like he'd be even able to get back in the lineup. He's out with migraines. As well, just sort of a quick snippet from me. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We're on our way to 500 subscribers. So as we were making this video, it's 474. So please, 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 if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. But moving along here to the X factors with Jason Zucker. For me, when we look at it, you're looking for players that have been there who have done that. Jason Zucker is a guy who's really going to take that next step, I think, for the Predators if they are going to be able to able to sort of overcome all expectations here and knock off the big bad Vancouver Canucks. So he's like a, a guy I'm looking at as well as Michael McCarron. He's another guy where, you know, he's just a really solid player who's going to throw around the body. He's going to sort of turn the tide of games when he needs to. He's a player I'm looking to in this series to really provide that physical side that Nashville has to play in order to sort of throw Vancouver off their game a little bit. The Canucks are a team that plays physical. You know, if, when you look at it in terms of penalty minutes or hits or whatever it might be, the, the two teams are basically straddling each other. So in that sense, you know, both teams want to play a physical style. But at the same time, you have to play a full, you know, 200 foot game. You can't take shortcuts. And I think that's where McCarron's really going to sort of take that next step. He's the guy I'm really looking, for, looking to in this series. Divide a little bit of that, that, that sort of firepower down low. Not necessarily going to put the pucks in the back of the net, but sort of throw that body and play a physical style, which is what they need to do. As well as Ryan McDonough, he's another one sort of been there, done that kind of guy. The, the, the Predators are a team that are very, very veteran heavy. You know, you even look to a guy like Ryan O'Reilly. All the players that have sort of been there who've done that, you got to rely upon them to really take your team to the next level, especially when you're going up against a young Vancouver team who doesn't really have that much veteran leadership. You know, they have to find a way to sort of exploit that, to play a patient game, to take to the, ne the next level, especially in the playoffs where, you know, really it's anyone's game. So we'll see there. Whether the Preds, I'm going to look to those three key players. For the Canucks, it's, an, it's sort of a little bit different. I'm going to look at a guy like Elias Lindholm, who hasn't really lived up to expectations coming off a trade from Calgary. We even saw at the trade deadline, the Canucks were seemingly trying to move him. One of the teams that was rumored was the Boston Bruins, ironic enough. But at the same time, you know, the, 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 the this guy has had problems really sort of settling into Vancouver. He hasn't quite found his groove. But what better time to find your groove than in the middle of a playoff run? So for me, he's a player I'm really looking at to take that next step and help his team to victory. Not in just this series, but in series that's coming up for the Vancouver Canucks. He's a guy I'm really looking for to sort of take, make that next step and, and sort of be what he once was with the Calgary Flames. He's one I'm really looking for there. So those Nikita Zadorov. He's sort of that physical, physical force on the blue line. He likes to play. He likes to use the body. He likes to, you know, sort of be physical. And that's what you need out of, of out of a player in the playoffs, especially on your back at, on your back end. That's what you're looking for. And I think you know when you're looking at a guy like Zadorov, 
might not necessarily show, show up on the score sheet, but it's that it's that sort of shutdown role that you need from your defenseman, especially in a tight checking game like what it's going to be in the playoffs. I'm looking to him to really step step it up for his team and help his team to sort of make it to that next step. So he's my second one. So as the last one is Philip Peronik. He's a guy that sort of gets lost behind a guy like Quinn Hughes. But he's a player that really, if he can get going and stay hot, he's a guy that's going to sort of fly under a lot of people's radars. But for me, Philip Ronick has to be the third X factor for the Vancouver Canucks. Because obviously, you know, when we look at the star players, are going to be star players. These sort of guys are who I'm looking for to really take that next step that might come out of the blue. So for that, those are my three X factors for both teams. And we'll flip it over here to the keys for, to success for both these teams, starting off with the Nashville Predators with the four by three by one. When we look at it, for all four lines have to show up for the forwards. All three lines have to show up for the defensemen. The goalie has to show up. If Predators want any shot at winning this series, they have to show up and really come to play against this tough Vancouver team who, sure, you know, they are a little bit on the young side. You know, you could sort of make the argument for it. But at the same time, if you can bring all four lines, all three defense lines, and all and your goaltender, you're going to do just fine in this series. As well as you got to set the tone early. When we look at it, you know, Nashville wants to play a physical style. They've had the momentum coming in. You know, they've been playing some good hockey as of late. But the trick for them is going to be able to, how are they going to be able to perform in that first game, the second game, or, and those are the most important games for the Nashville Predators. Because if they can win those, you know, they get the momentum behind them, they get to go home in front of their home crowd and really sort of take it to them there. So for them, you know, set the tone is very, very important, especially early in the series. And the last one is the vets. When we look at it for the Nashville Predators, their team is star studded with veteran players. They can use that. Then they might just be able to make it through this series alive. But at the same time, you know, if they make some bad penalties, you know, take bad penalties, they do some stuff they aren't supposed to. It's going to be a lot tougher to claw your way back, especially compared to the star studded team we see on the other side with the Vancouver Canucks, because they are a team that, as we're going to talk about in a second, for their keys to success, dominate, dominate, dominate. For the Vancouver Canucks, they can dominate play like they have all season long. They're going to do just fine in this game and this series. So when we look at it, you know, the, for the Canucks, they don't have to play a different style than what they've done. The Canucks are a team that have that have just shown, you know, they're a skilled team at the end of the day. Their forward group is off the chart. Their defense is really good. Their goaltender has been amazing. So for in, in that sense, you know, it has to be it has to be just dominate play. That's the key to success for the Vancouver Canucks. And we'll look at now the matchup. So in terms of sort of the comparison, the first one we'll look at the forward group. It has to be the Vancouver Canucks just in terms of their depth. That's what really sets them apart from the Nashville Predators. Sure, you know, they got their, their, their star players. But for me, the depth part of the Vancouver Canucks is really what sets them apart. They have three really, really high goal scoring lines. They got the fourth line who's a little bit more of a checking line. But at the same time, they find the back of the net. So the depth part is going to be crucial for the Vancouver Canucks to be successful. As well, the defense... And this is one I'm going to give to the Nashville Predators. For me, I'll give the goalies to Vancouver. The, the reason why, you know, it's really a toss-up, right? When we look at it, Roman Yossi versus Quinn Hughes. And, and it just sort of falls down from there. Both teams have sort of equivalents on both, side, both sides. And the goalie between Demko and Saros, who is it going to be? Who's going to take it? That's really up to you to decide. For me, I just said, you know what, we'll flip a coin. The other one will get the other one. Sure enough, it landed on heads for the defenseman, which meant that Nashville got the defense part. And the goalie went to Vancouver. When we look at it, you know, Demko has been a little bit better this year. But, you know, it's just so tight. Both teams are really, really solid. And that all leads us to the final point here. I'm going to take the Vancouver Canucks in five games and look at it just by star power alone. I don't think Nashville is going to be able to withstand sort of those four lines of forwards, that star-studded defense group, and lastly, Thatcher Demko and Nett. It's going to be a tough series for the Nashville Predators. So for that reason, I'm going to take the Vancouver Canucks in five games. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you like, you should consider subscribing. Tell all your friends, leave a comment down below your thoughts on the Vancouver Canucks versus Nashville Predators. Until next time, see you.